now? Okay. Politicians are like sperm. Only one in a million turn out to be a human being. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's good. It's not a Blake joke, but hang, hang on a second. Hang on. Okay, Kyle, go ahead and tell the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was too close to the truth to actually be funny. I'm sorry. Too funny. close. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, it's Tuesday night. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. You know what this is? This is Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls. Our Attempted a talk show, and uh, we're doing a pretty good job, uh, if you believe the numbers <laughs> on the viewers. Thank you again. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy cool stuff like shirts or bath mats or duvets, no shit, you can buy a duvet. Uh, tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. I believe it's below me today. No, it's... I don't know where it is. It's somewhere on the screen. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know the drill. We're here. We're gonna we're gonna jam with you for an hour. See that I'm showing my age <laughs> for an hour. Hey, I think you're a cool cat, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always thought I was hip. <laughs> a hip cat. Well, we're about the same age. I square, think. man. <laughs> You're cool Jesus to me. Square. I'm a hepcat. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, if you've been watching the show a while, you recognize everybody, even David, because uh, David's starting to become a regular, and we're glad for that. We I aren't glad that him. he won one of the dice. Oh, did he win the <laughs> dice? He, he got the die. So he got the cool crystal die. Now, folks, if you want a shot uh, like David, because David's going to be out for a month, because... We don't like We're, we're going to have to impose that. Otherwise, David's the only <laughs> one who plays, and I think he's got all the cards. I now. think so. <laughs> uh, if you want a bingo card for the game, either Saturday or next Saturday, we don't do a bingo card for this, hit us up. If you want to have a seat on the show, hit us up. If you want to have a seat during the game, hit us up. It's kind of, uh, you know... The, but buy us a drink first. Cause... You got to buy us a drink. You got to buy Scott yeah. a drink or tell him something really amazing so he can have a shot. Unless he's got the coronavirus already. It's hard to tell because he keeps traveling. Uh, Scott, we hope you don't have the coronavirus. <clears throat> if you do, uh, you can still be on our show because we can't catch it from that far away. Uh, tonight, we're going to go ahead and recap Saturday's show, which was a one shot uh, starring Carol and those East Coast suckers is how we'll <laughs> phrase it. Uh, Tom Brady loving bastards. Uh, yeah, we're also going to talk about the inner planes. Uh, before we do that, uh, let's go ahead and be nice tonight. We'll let Carol start. Carol, who are you and what do you do? Well, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too bad the bingo cards, I think, because there you go. Talked over Carol right there. Um, uh, my name's Carol uh, Pandolf. I am a commission miniature painter, longtime uh, D and D Pathfinder, Starfinder player, and occasional GM, and the newest member of the campaign. Yay! Uh, and I <sighs> got to play last Saturday's campaign with my friends. So we'll get to that in a minute. Last nice. Saturday's one shot. Yeah. Come on, get it right. You're really Gosh. botching the production value. Of this show. Hey, yeah, you maintain man. a high bar and you're just <laughs> shattering it. Uh, did Scott ever get a hold of you? No. God, never... did you did you get the minis that she sent you? She, yeah, she Scott. Gary minds want to know because Gary Khan technically is still on. We aren't sure if it's been canceled. Oh, but uh, Carol yeah. did a lot of uh, minis for Scott's four-part uh, convention offering up at GaryCon next month, so look for that. Over to David. David, who are you? Tell us a li little bit about yourself <laughs> I through it. Hi, I'm David, and I am relatively a d and neophyte, meaning I've been playing probably cumulatively, uh, cumulatively probably only about 18 months. So, uh, found this show, became a fan, now I'm on it. <laughs> like you said, was oh, that easy? Was that easy, David? It was easy. There you go. Folks. There you go. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, just a big fan of the show. Love it. Hit them up, and next thing you know, I'm on it. 
Folks, look at that Just face. like Frank's mother in the red light district. <laughs> now, that's a good joke right there. That's uh, a good look, at, look at David's face. If you're going to Maryville, Tennessee in a few weeks for, uh, what is it? Uh, Save versus Hunger, uh, April 3rd through the 5th. Uh, Maryville, Tennessee. It's next to Knoxville, not far from Pigeon Forge, too. There you go. He is going to be handing out free swag. So hit him up, and if he's already out, beat the shit out of him <laughs> <laughs> for not holding something back. <laughs> you promised me free shit. <laughs> like, all right, I'll give you the pin that I have here. <laughs> we want your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, Kyle. Kyle, who the fuck are you? Hi, I'm Kyle. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a really, really long regular on the show. Since its inception. In fact, I was on the first episode before it even aired. Uh, murder hoboing all along the way. Mm. Uh, anyway, I'm a long <laughs> player, uh, creator, and on occasion I like to challenge the people here with interesting thoughts, make them grow outside of the box, and provide you guys with interesting content. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't push Frank hard enough because last Saturday's one shot was boring. Ghastly, <laughs> <laughs> very <sucked> ass. <laughs> it was horrible. Uh, it was boring because we didn't murder hobo each other. Boring because people who like Tom Brady were on it. Uh, <laughs> folks, well, that's true. Uh, folks, if you missed Saturday's show, it is still on Twitch. It is uh, in our archive as well. Tinyurl.com. M Hobo Inc archive uh you can watch it there tonight we're going to give you some spoilers so if you don't want to hear those uh just mute us for about 25 30 minutes and then, and then you see me talking i'm not going to give any spoilers yeah i didn't watch carol died <laughs> <laughs> no. and we're on the plane of water <laughs> you keep dreaming that yeah this guy over here he kept saying uh yeah, Frank told me it was going to be on the plane of water. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. <laughs> Make it sound like I was pretending to be helpful. Hey, Frank told me it's the plane of water. <laughs> yeah, or a bunch water of water genasi. <laughs> Thing, I didn't believe either one of these two. Yeah, and, and I made my own character. Although I did have to tweak it a little after I found out it was fire. Because <laughs> my bets, and I did take a couple of water-based, you know, like underwater breathing and and frost that worked out real. Oh, well. frost usually does. As far as I knew, frost worked pretty well against fire. Did it actually work, Frank? It damaged it. Did it actually um, damage it? <laughs> it <laughs> uh, <laughs> folks, as you can, uh, as we have alluded to, uh, the one shot involved four ninth level PCs uh, charged with purchasing a Phoenix from uh, uh, Pasha on the elemental plane of fire. Uh, despite the constant nagging by Carol, even though the other three people were exceptionally nice and kind, Carol just demanded to have it her way. And Except I'm gonna Heidi. Screw Heidi. I heard what? what she said at the end of it. I was listening. <laughs> Screw you, Heidi. I wasn't watching this. My show. feelings are hurt. There were shots fired from our table. About we're salt in the earth. We're burning this bitch down, Heidi. You <laughs> and I. <laughs> if Kyle's angry, I must applaud Heidi for whatever she said or did. Uh, but enough from me. Carol, you played it. Uh, go ahead and give the brief synopsis before we move on to David, who actually watched it, and Kyle slept through. No, oh, I had God. to butcher a chicken, thank you. Oh, Lord. So chicken is white. Scott, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Carol. Tell us, uh, tell us about fetching a phoenix. Yeah. Scott, if you DM me your address, I'll send you the giblets. That's really the fun part of a chicken anyway, right, guys? I'm sure USPS sure. will be happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Carol. Tell us how great. Anytime you're ready, Carol. Are we we sure? only have an hour here. Come now, on. If you stop talking, then I can get it done. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, it was, it was, it had an absolute blast. Uh, yeah, we basically, we got. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> you sound like a schoolgirl there. Like, oh my gosh. It was. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. It was. <laughs> I'm going to applaud Frank for that one right there because <laughs> you made her sound like a schoolgirl. She had such a great time. <laughs> I so, oh my gosh, we were at the point of fire. Is uh, breaking Frank on the bingo card? I think it, it is not. It should be. It'll never be. Should be. <laughs> it should be. All right, so anyways, so we had such, yeah, we had a blast, I mean, which is appropriate for the plane of fire. So we were sent on a shopping trip to get a phoenix, as he said, from the Pasha by um, the Duchess of Salt, who mortgaged her estate because her darling daughter, Veruca, who wants it now, uh, wanted a phoenix because she heard the next kingdom, they had a phoenix. So... I remember going, let's see, we were portaled into the plane of fire via a bathtub. That was fun. <laughs> um, and we had was to go, good. I'll tell you what, we had to go two by two. We couldn't all get in once. And so we had to actually carefully. So that would have been a little bit worse rating than we normally care. <laughs> <laughs> but that, well, that, even the beginning was interesting because we had to figure out who should we send first? Because I forget who you suggested, which I knew was wrong. But we knew the answer was it had to be our... I think uh, only you knew the answer correctly. Yeah. No, I think some of the other players did too. So um, someone had a pendant. Heidi, that's right. Heidi did not know have it right. She was going to go through first. Yes, the barbarian, Jack the Axe. Uh, had the pendant, which basically would protect all of us uh, from taking damage in the uh, in the plane of fire. So we convinced her to let him go first, and actually, but they both went together. So, and we immediately ended up in a fight with the but what the hell were they? Salamanders, uh, salamanders, and fire snakes. Salamanders. Someone uh, watched the show. Girl. Yeah. The guy who says he didn't watch the show, he watched more of the show than you did. I played. I played in it. And that was, what, three days ago? Sunday, Monday. All right. So, yeah, or four days ago. Come on. That was a long time ago for me. I'm getting old. My memory's getting bad. So we had that fight. We took care of him. Yeah, dementia. <laughs> Carol, that's the private chat. Don't read it out loud. <laughs> Just go on. Hurry up before you forget what happened to the rest of the episode. Right. Oh so my gosh! Got, got through the fight. We 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 noticed we noticed the city of brass on one side and this little hole in the wall place on the other. And I only saw the city of brass, and I went, "Look, this is we're supposed to go." And then. I think, believe it or not, it was Jack the Axe was, and it goes, no, it's over there. Because apparently Jack the Axe, even in spite of the fact that we all know he does not have the highest intelligence or wisdom of the party, his dice made liars out of the, re out of the rest of us. He rolled so freaking well all night, he was the smartest person in the party. So, and most lovable. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so I'll get to that. So we go to the little hole in the wall, which makes more sense since we're trying to find, uh, basically, I think it was a mine, it was a brass mine where they were sending it to the city of brass. And we had to find the Pasha that was in charge of the place. So we get there and there's a couple of fire giants. And I remember the bridge with the with the uh, elemental, with the fire trout that were coming up to smack us. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, I did not burn off my eyebrows. I'm really happy about that because I remember I got hit by one of them. Your husband did. Yeah. Oh, that was at the end, though. He got hit on going on the way out, and he burned off all his facial hair, not just his eyebrows. I oh. assume the beard was gone, too, and he's a dwarf. I think that was our first crit fail. <laughs> oh, he rolled. He, yeah, my poor husband. He rolled <laughs> once. No, he rolled more than one one that night. Um, so we got in. Uh, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. So the fire giants, that's right. They apparently support <laughs> them to throw boulders at the fish. But, of course, when you're coming over the bridge, it kind of looks like they're going to throw that boulder at you. So I was I was holding my breath there for Weaving a the story plot. <laughs> <laughs> we get to the fire giants on the bridge, and, you know, and they, they, they 
they liked this enough. They decided to introduce to our barbarian because he got every D12 roll the entire night. Um, so he got the necklace and then he got Waltzing Matilda. Waltzing Matilda was, she was a giant with a charisma of five. I remember that much. And uh, she took quite a liking to Jack the Axe, which was so freaking hilarious. And he managed to string her along the entire rest of the way. As we went in, we managed to buy the Phoenix or buy a little ingot that says we paid for it. Um, and then we went to the avi uh, aviary. Was it the Aver aviary? Aviary. Aviary. Thank you. <laughs> Once I couldn't remember the place, I couldn't remember how to freaking pronounce it. So we went there. There was nobody home and said, be back in two hours. So we decided to leave the ingot as proof of payment and pick up one of the phoenixes, which we found in cages in the back. Well, as we approach them, one of them telepathically starts talking to Jack because, of course, he made another freaking D12. Uh, he said, Mommy. And the phoenix loved our barbarian. Now, mind you, I'm playing a druid here who has eight ranks in ha animal handling. When you know, I couldn't freaking make a roll to get the phoenix to like me over Jack. And every time I try to, you know, befriend it, it would bite me or whack me with a wing or something, which I think was really comical. And as we're about to leave, Mommy, I think it's Mommy, right? I know she was in charge of the, of the aviary, but was she also Mom? <laughs> she was the watchdog. She's just a watchdog. Okay. So, oh, so she. Was she was she, not the person in charge. Was not the person. said, so, but the interesting thing was our rogue, who was played by Heidi, our tiefling, um, she basically figured out that it may be showing her the ingot and that we were there, you know, legally would make a difference. And I, that's when I did make an animal handling check because I managed to, yes, I did. I did. Oh, I, I I'm thinking uh, yeah. maybe it'll make a difference that you had the token. It did not. The to oh, so <laughs> actually made the difference. But then you said she saw it sitting on the desk. So I don't know. I thought it made a difference. For those of you not in New England, that means saw. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I do not have that. Tom Silva, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so we got so anyways we got the we got the phoenix that followed actually followed our barbarian out and we left and as we were leaving oh yes i forgot about the sketchy npcs um there was a was it hold elven on, hold on elven Frank ranger had sketchy pcs i know huh NPCs. Uh, no uh i believe they treated this party fairly because the party treated them fairly they were dicks finally <laughs> they were absolute dicks okay they didn't like us before they even talked to us especially probably from so you were from new england you had that new england <laughs> state about you. They, they saw what you were made of <laughs> <laughs> they had true I sight so. <laughs> uh no and i said so, yeah, so basically, I don't know what happened there. She also said she looked at us funny as we were leaving. I mean, and said we had, oh, wait, Jack spat at one of them, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, after he was a dick to us. He was a dick to us first, okay? So, because he looked at you funny. What wow. guy he's killing? He didn't kill him. All he did was spat on because he was a dick. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to go with everyone else in this. Your P NPCs are dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't and know why she would say that. that. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so, um, so basically, she, after we get the we got a, we get the phoenix legally, all of a sudden we see the female ranger go walking into the thing, and then the next thing we hear is a huge screech, and I believe the phoenix emerging out, all pissed off. Bell's ringing because apparently she probably told them we stole it, even though that happened off screen. So we went running for our lives back to the spot. Um, there was only two fights the whole time. The first fight was with the salamanders, and the second fight was actually in the city um, 
with some guards that decided to hassle us because we didn't, not everybody, most who, of us. Who? Who? It was, it was <laughs> Joe's cleric. Aha. Uh -huh. did not. Joe being your husband. Of the Pasha. I thought I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't realize you were from Boston. I speak more like a mid Midwesterner than you do, apparently. <laughs> so there were only two fights we got into, and and DJ. So, yeah, I started that one because I felt we needed to fight something. And but my that, NPCs are dicks. <laughs> so they were hassling us because we didn't worship the fucking statue. So or were you so, told to worship the statue? Yep. Did three of the four of you worship the statue? Yep. Remind me again how the guards are dicks. <laughs> so oh, gosh, guys. I, I, I claim redemption. Nope. Nope. <laughs> They're still dicks. So did you think that two fights was enough for the two-hour session? Oh, yeah. For, 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 for the way we handled everything, I thought was entertaining. Um, I thought... Yeah, all the shenanigans were where Jack the Axe got all the all the cool stuff that and if I thought it all worked with that character. I mean, it is an amazing, amazing character. Uh, and that one he's had for long. All the rest of us were playing new characters. That one is a very well long time uh, character he's been playing for years. So one of the uh, backstories to Jack the Axe was he actually died years before from fire yeah I was, okay, so it's not even just that that was literally the first session he had ever played him in and my husband was gming and he threw a, a fire elemental at us but it was empowered by an artifact and it killed jack the axe in literally the first session he was in <coughs> so then he's, he has since brought him back. He was a long-time Pathfinder uh, society. Bah, 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 No, no. That's for most Not a Pathfinder show. We're <laughs> <laughs> a cool <laughs> show, Carol. Cool. D&D. And &D. cool shit happens. <laughs> but David, you watched the show live, uh, mostly because you were trying to hoard your bingo card uh, right. entries and win, which you did. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. What did you think of the show? I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. I thought the role play was spot on. Oh my God. Can't write better material than that. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the bingo card, I mean, basically filled itself. <laughs> um, like for example, war really moment filled and fast. shit on fire. <laughs> Literally yep. within the first five minutes of the, of the show. So, but it was great. I mean, there were a lot of laughs to be had. Uh, improvised weapon. Oh, my God. That was a square on my bingo card. It was either the snot or Matilda's fist. <laughs> <laughs> Her punching that. out the Azar was quite fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. So, so what, was the, what was your favorite part of the show, aside from winning? Oh, oh Matilda. I couldn't, I couldn't resist right Typing in chat, is she waltzing? So now, hang on a second, David. It right, sounds was... like she wasn't a dick, even though she was an NPC. You're right. Is that the case? Is well, that the case? That's the that's, that's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not at first, but definitely she was way too clingy. Oh well, oh, okay. well yeah, oh, well. yeah. Screw those clingy women. Yeah, women's lib. Yeah, oh, wow, <laughs> Carol. Half of our population is female. Offended, alienated mm -hmm. them. Thank you. I hope you're happy with. Yourself. I'm a female. Ladies, I apologize on behalf of the rest of us for what Carol <laughs> deems classic female attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Please, give me a <laughs> Kyle, we know you watched it because you were in chat. So I was in chat, yeah, for a little while. Like I said, I was butchering food and everything like that. So uh, I did have to stop for a little bit. But I really, from start to the last 15 minutes, I watched. Great, funny the entire time. I loved that the Phoenix did not like Veruca Salt 
at the end of it too. Well, then you saw the end of it. You saw the. That's why I said I watched the beginning, missed the big section in the middle, (laughs) and watched the last fifteen minutes where Heidi shat all over me, despite the fact not knowing who I was. Everybody knows Heidi, (laughs) burning ground, you're going down. (laughs) I've got a one-shot coming up. It's called uh, Fuck Heidi. Heidi, (laughs) Fuck yourself. I will be playing an NPC called Charlie Sheen in that episode. It is the Heidi Fleiss story, right? (laughs) Hey, I'll admit it. That moment too when I rolled when you said roll to see whether or not the Phoenix was gonna like Veruca and I was praying oh please let me roll so she hates her let me roll so she hates her and then thank God I rolled. I'm sorry that doesn't sound like the NPC was a dick that sounds like the PC was yeah. a dick. Veruca Redemption, mm. Redemption <laughs> Carol, you have Redemption, proven yeah. your argument yep. incorrect. Uh, so, folks, it's uh, still on Twitch. It's still in our archive. Take a look at it. It was a really fun adventure. Uh, it was nice to get uh, a high-level scenario in without a lot of combat. Uh, it offered a lot of things. Uh, and we're going to cover some of those aspects tonight as we move on to topic numero uno. Uh, and that is the inner planes, better known as the elemental and para-elemental planes. Uh, each one of us have taken an opportunity to go ahead and bone up on a specific plane by choice. Uh, we've already covered the fire one. Which uh, uh, plane was I supposed to do? You were uh, doing the who's it plane. Oh, uh, heart. You're on water. The heart plane. As it's what my water. non-script it's- says. <laughs> <laughs> water you know you wanted me to you know think that was going to happen in the water thing so i said you should do water that's right carol threw you under the bus even though my npcs are apparently dicks uh gosh carol david got earth so david uh what do you think about the uh elemental plane of earth talk to me about movement breathing Uh, and biting and loving on the elemental plane of earth well uh i think the plane of earth is probably the most hostile and the second would be the plane of fire um recently, prove your answer huh? i was gonna prove say your yeah. answer i'll prove it uh lack of air you know uh i mean literally if you bamf right into the plane of earth i mean you can be crushed immediately or just suffocate you know, depending on where you land i mean uh, basically, the plane of Earth is um, the plane that uh, touches the plane of water and the plane of fire. And um, a bunch of the dangers and hazards that they have is, one, no air in some places. Um, gas pockets is another. And then frequent earthquakes that keep moving. Um, the, the way that the plane is shaped is that there, there are peaks and mountains uh, that are larger than any of the mountains in the material plane. And uh, the way that they extend, they extend up into a sunless sky where it's uh, just stars, but it's, it's kind of like in real life, the, the atmosphere. It's just, it's devoid of any air up there. So somehow if you manage to get your way up to the peaks of the, the plane of earth, then that, that would be what you would see if you survive. Um, the plane of Earth, uh, as far as like movement goes, is um, there's a number of ways that you can move. But I have some questions, Frank, about this. Sure. Okay. Uh, what spells would allow you to traverse the plane of Earth? One of the ones that I could think of is etherealness. It's eight hours, and you could literally move through the rock. <laughs> The so, uh, old earth uh, stone Moldor. shape might help. Uh, there's pass wall, which pass would wall at least get yes. you a 20 foot tunnel. Yes, I thought. About don't that. ask Frank; he doesn't know anything. About <laughs> he doesn't know shit. <laughs> but I you know would how have, to get you there. I don't <laughs> know. He knows how to write amazing NPCs who, if the PCs treat them terribly, turn into dicks. Thank you, Kyle. That is an accurate statement. <laughs> well, speaking of dicks, <laughs> there's uh, the denizens of the plane of Earth are 
pretty dicky. Uh, the the lords that that kind of rule over the plane of Earth are the Dao. They're a Jin. Uh, they're uh, notoriously now they're a, a neutral evil uh, alignment, and they will enslave anybody that they get caught in, in on that plane. I mean, that's pretty much their role as slavers because they're complete. They're always toiling. Uh, using the slaves to harvest uh, gems and rare metals and things like that. So, like denizens that venture, like two that manage to make their way into the plane of Earth, say dwarves or uh, deep gnomes that are mining, somehow find a portal and break their way in. They're not going to last too long. They're either going to be captured or they're going to be crushed because any tunnels and mazes and things like that are constantly changing. Now, a couple of th uh, features of the plane of Earth is that one of the main ways to travel is uh, through the sevenfold maze work. And basically what it is, is just a labyrinth of tunnels. And then eventually it, it goes to an outcropping moat of Earth that is basically a labyrinth as far as you can see. And it's constantly changing. Uh, within the labyrinth, they have their slaves working because they, they harvest uh, gems and rare metals out of the walls, but they literally just seal themselves off as they're, as they're being mined. So it's a continuous cycle. So like I said, the Dow are always looking for, for slaves to, uh, to work with mining. Now, one of the other denizens that they have there, they have the Azers. Azers are like dwarves, but they are literally made out of precious metal. Uh, they look like a dwarf, but their bodies are metallic, kind of kind of metallic looking, kind of like a planetar or something like that. But uh, they're, as far as like hair features, they're all inflamed. Beard, hair, it, it's all a flaming mane. I believe the uh, doctor has a cream for that. Yeah, I think they do. <laughs> you got a little burning and itching? Sure. Um, one of the things that, uh, that is notable that's worth noting about azers is that they don't reproduce they they cat they they're cast from a mold so whenever the first one was created they just create others by casting molds so but uh anyway uh the main feature in the plane of earth is the city of jewels uh that is the sit that's the capital city of the dow uh, the city itself is literally made out of precious metals and gems, and that is what's being harvested uh, by the slaves of the Dow. Uh, the, if any visitors manage to get in without, you know, being forced into slavery or anything like that, uh, if like during their ventures, if there's a thief in the party or whatever, if you steal as much as one gem or one stone, precious stone, uh, the city itself is protected by magic and it alerts all the Dow in the city uh, that uh, to the spot where you had stolen the gem. So, so the city is essentially my largest NPC yet. It is. <laughs> and the penalty is usually death and it extends to the thief's family as well. <laughs> so there, Carol. There's like a, your dick NPC. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like I said, the whole thing. Now, um, there, there are several uh, additions that, uh, of course, that went over the planes and stuff like that. And a couple of things that I found uh, with the plane of Earth is that uh, that the, the Dow are ruled by one uh, particular uh, gen. It's uh, a con basically, is the ruler of it. Um, oh, God! I knew immediately. Yeah, I knew <laughs> I, would, sorry, I, knew I was going to get that joke. 15 drip, years drip, too drip. old for a Polaroid. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, there, there's been a, a lot of um, uh, lore that goes into the plane of Earth. I mean, there, there are things there. Um as far as like uh, where the planes touch, there's the, the plane of water and where, where it touches the, the plane of earth. As it starts to move uh, from water to earth, you get what's called the silt flats. And that's where uh, it starts to turn into, uh, what's it called, Frank? A demiplane or, no, not a demiplane. Para. Uh, para, para plane. Elemental, elemental plane. plane. 
yeah. a plane of ooze. Exactly. And uh, one of the, the lore pieces about that that's very interesting. Uh, Para-elemental, I uh, gotcha. Uh, the, the thing about the plane of ooze is uh, it's basically a swamp. And uh, structures and things there are usually built on stilts, kind of like where I'm from, Louisiana. And uh, the uh, things eventually sink. So even if it's built on stilts and all that, structures will sink. But one of the things about the lore is, is that uh, characters that are desperate to hide magical items or legendary items can throw it into the swamp or uh, on the plane of ooze, and the the object uh, probably won't be found for at least a hundred years. I guess somehow it rises up from from the swamp. So, but anyway, that's one of the the little notes that I noticed about that. Now, on the fire side, there's the the um, what's it called? The Fountain of Creation. And that's where the forges and things like that, the Azars are, that are uh, constantly, uh, you know, harvesting and uh, casting, you know, uh, rare ingots and things like that. So, so those are the, the, the two main features of the planes that actually touch the plane of Earth. So, and I'm droning on, so... I think yeah. I think I've covered it. <laughs> Fine. Real quick, so, then so oh well. Go ahead. No, go, go ahead. ahead. My no. thing was as you were reading it, as you were going over it, David. Did you come up with any inspiration on? Damn it! Had to stole my run. thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you were going for? That was what I was going for. Sorry. If you were going to run an adventure in the plane of Earth, how are you doing that? You know what did you read that was like, well, yeah, I can steal from this and. Uh, this is how it's going to work. Uh, I would start probably a campaign that starts in the Underdark mm. and uh, through uh, through somewhere where the, the planes actually touch the material plane close to the Underdark. Uh, there's like a mode of magic or something like that that opens a portal to the, uh, the, the plane of Earth. And uh, you could probably lead the party in through there. Um, as far as an adventure, of course, I mean, it pretty much writes itself. You get caught by the Dow, you know, the Dow or, or greedy fuckers. So they're, so they're either going to bargain, you know, for your freedom or, uh, you know, send you on some kind of quest where they got the upper hand. You're going to end up as a damn slave anyway. So. It works. Do a jailbreak scene where you're making a run through all these endless tunnels, oh, trying yeah. to avoid dead ends of this Dow or trapping you. Uh, yeah, and there, there's all kinds of denizens on the plane of Earth. There's Basculus, there's Zorn, there's... Oh, fuck Zorns. <laughs> Love Zorn. Love me a good Zorn. <laughs> you know, I mean, things like that, you know, so there, there's a lot of great things that you can throw in there, you know. Carol, you had air. Yeah. Why, okay. why don't you blow hard into this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one particular feature that I love about the plane of air that I think is really interesting for uh, dungeon masters to use, and that is subjective gravity. Because oh. basically, the plane of air is not empty. All right. So apparently, inhabitants from the plane of Earth tried to invade the plane of air but failed. So there's lots of flotsam and jetsam, there's lots of moats of earth that fact cities and such have been built on. Uh, also, apparently there's also cloud banks that are magically enhanced that also can hold cities as well, which I think is really interesting. But the most interesting feature to me was the fact that there's no gravity here. There is basically, gravity is what the player determines. Now, the bad thing about that is um, if you start falling, you fall at normal speed. And if you hit something, if you determine, you know, determine that, you know, gravity's this way and there's a thing here, you're going to land on it and you're going to die. Um, so I think that could be used for all sorts of interesting things. I'm trying to remember what else I read. I had to read up on it today. It's been a while. I th said I've, that is the biggest thing I remembered. And I'm like, I want to explore that. Um, you, obviously, you can breathe there. That's not an issue. 
um, it's air. <laughs> there's, there's lots of oxygen. So you don't have to worry about things. It's one of probably the more hospitable places for normal humans or demi-humans to go because, as I said, breathing's not an issue. In fact, the one thing I read was that is an issue is finding food and water. You can get, there are storms. You, there is thunder and lightning. It, uh, the elemental plane of lightning is one of the things that borders it. So you can get storms and so you can get rainwater, but most things in the elemental plane of air uh, will disperse. So you're not going to get any meat or food, nothing really. Well, and some of the rocks, some of the earth modes, you can have plants, but they're pretty hard. It's hard to find. So it's like, well, that's interesting um, that you actually, there is not a lot of food there. Um, so I'm trying to talk about what else I want to say here. I got to go back and reread because I like, I said, I'm going. Oh my God. If only she had known she was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, actually I did. I was trying to find the freaking name of the city. There is a city here and I can't freaking remember the name and I can't find it now. Um, <laughs> One of the other things I thought was kind of interesting is um, his, so some magic here is enhanced and some is impeded. If you, uh, any of the like earth spells, like, uh, you know, some of the ones you actually mentioned, anything with the earth subtype, those are impeded. You actually have to make a check. It says DC 15 plus level the spell to actually get the spell off. So, it's kind of like when we were in the plane of fire and we had ad trouble acting some of our spells, although that was more contacting our deities. Uh, the NPC was a dick. <laughs> the DM was a dick, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, finding the name of the city either. Hmm. There isn't city there. I found it. You know what it is? It's probably in the players in the uh, DMG. The DMG... So here's the other interesting thing I found. There doesn't seem to be a lot of rules for running in the planes in fifth head. So we have most of the supplements here and I went and looked through them and they basically, all I got was a description of, yeah, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I just read all your God. shit before you guys, so, you know. <laughs> you want me to do the rest of the planes for you or? <laughs> You're good. Good. Remember, I said it's like it's, it's. I don't know if it's. It's funny. It looks like you should pronounce like aqua. It's a a q a, but aqua sounds more like it should be on the elements of plane of water. Um, but there's spells on there that, well, of course, air based spells are enhanced. So, like you have range doubled. It depends. It depends on what uh, what it is that you can do. Inhabitants, well, that's, there are this gin and coarse air elementals and that. Probably Aarakocra, too. We hate those guys. <laughs> oh, I love Aarakocra. Yeah. Their I'm feathers sure. make such beautiful jewelry. <laughs> yeah, Aarakocra. Yeah, I know. I was like, I, I was thinking of Manise when I was reading through this. I'm like, hey, I know <laughs> where, where his peeps are. They're all up in the elemental plate of air. Uh, a gargoyle. Uh, actually, they were all slaughtered by gnomes, apparently. <laughs> gnomes, gnomes are the real dicks of the world. Apparently, True that. except for mine that played in this game this week. <sighs> sure. She was a dick. Um, uh, gargoyles too. Uh, and gargoyles are interesting because, of course, they're also they're also stone. So there's sort of a crossover between earth and air. And one thing I said that I read was they're kind of emissaries from the plane of Earth. They're friendly emissaries. So, uh, but anything air based, anything that flies, this is like their kingdom. Um, it, you know, obviously flying isn't an issue unless you bump into one of those storms that can crop up. You can get really, really strong winds. Um, the way you can access it uh, from the prime material plane, okay, you know, where most adventures are. They said you could go to a top of the mountain, find a current of air going upwards, or at something like the center of a hurricane. The eye of a hurricane apparently is a portal to the plane of air. Um, I don't know if I could think of anything else I want to say. Um, well, let's go with Kyle's question, because yeah. that, that, that is the main oh, thing. The adventure, right? The adventure. So, How do you run an adventure? 
as I said, it's adventure time. I love the fact that gravity is any, you know, gravity is how you determine it. I want to play with that. Um, I would have, I kind of like the thought of having the pasties either accidentally uh, end up blipping in because they don't really, I don't want, or, or have it like half, the way it happened on um, in Saturday's game where he just missed the actual mark by a little. Not by that much. <laughs> by that much. And they end up in the middle of just air and they have to figure out which way to go. I think that would be fun, fun way to start. But then have them make make their way to one of those um, to one of those rocky moats that's got like a city on it, and and go in there. And I think I I always find Jin rather an interesting interesting creature. And I would do something. I said obviously I've thought hugely through, but I would I would definitely have that be the end goal is that have to deal with the Jin. The producer likes Jin, but only with club soda. <laughs> I drink mine with hot sauce. All right, would you, is Genie better for you then? Genie is one of my all-time favorites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Kyle, uh, finish out the planes with water for us, please. Water. H2O, Agua, which is apparently a big city on the elemental plane. Kind of air, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of stupid. Agua. Uh, so honestly, I was going to, uh, uh, lump air and water together, but Carol just kept talking over me every time I was trying to make a point. Oh, and, uh, shit. and that's because they are actually very similar to each other. And that again, there is no direction, uh, directional gravity in this world. Whatever you consider up is up and either you begin to sink down if you're wearing plate armor or if you have a bunch of uh, bladder skins full of air, you start to float up in whatever direction you think is the right way. And that, um, well, it is a little bit different now in 5e than it was back in the day. And I honestly prefer the older version. But um, yeah, the older version was you are in water. You are always in water. And only when you start begin to leave the plane of water, do you find yourself leaving it? Whereas now in 5e, you can actually be on the surface of the plane of water and still technically be in there. There are islands on there as well as a sea floor and a sea bottom. Thanks, <laughs> Kevin Costner. Oh my gosh, I was just talking about that movie today. I love that movie. <laughs> I'm going to see The Postman here soon, someday. Oh, that, I like that one. I yeah. haven't seen that one. Oh, two and a half hours. A little long. <laughs> yeah. it's, a good, it's a good one. But uh, um, at this point, it's the most survivable of all the uh, other realms. If you <clears throat> are going to insist on sending your players to a different plane early on in a campaign or at a low level one shot, honestly, the plane of water is to do that. Just make sure they're at fifth level so that wizard can do some water breathing. Otherwise, everyone's put and dead. Um, <laughs> other than that, this plane essentially acts very similar to playing underwater. Um, if you have a swim speed, you're doing great. If you don't, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> if you get in a fight, you are going to die. <laughs> but that's why I think air is actually more survivable because, first of all, you don't need to worry about breathing it. You just breathe it. And you don't have the those annoying underwater rules. You do have to worry about falling, falling, wrong. dropping <laughs> weapons, items, blue dragon Meanwhile, eating your head, blue dragon <laughs> eating your head. You can play with gravity and catch your weapon. I mean, I mean, honestly, the idea of oh yeah, well, if you decide gravity is this way, at least on the plane of water, you're not moving very far. Meanwhile, in the plane of air, you're like, I decide gravity's up. Oh wait, no, it's down. Up, down, sideways. Doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, you're stupid, Carol, and so is your play. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the uh, plane of water <laughs> is run by the uh, gin known as Merids, who uh, uh, tend to be a little bit darker on top of things, uh, uh, more of a chaotic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't no, no, no. Oh, I, I apologize. 
I'm being racist against the Marids, and I apologize for any Marids who are watching this show. There you go. Now you're back on. <laughs> and we lost all the Marids. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, but one of the things that I've really enjoyed from the older uh, versions is that um, the most dangerous aspects of the plane of water is just typically things that you would find on the material plane. We have red algae that happens down in the Gulf and in the plane of water, vast oceans of red algae come swarming in to steal oxygen and start murdering anything in its path you could find yourself in a very cold, uh, uh, um, nearly frozen bit of water and start taking cold damage. Or you could be standing next to a storm giant and he pees and uh, all of a sudden you're in- You're a maniac, a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is one city in there in particular, City of Glass takes place in a portal. Um, where the city is half air, half water. A um, lot of trade happens there. Um, and then as far as that, you could really throw in a lot of interesting stuff into the, the plane as well. You could pull something out from the Pacific Ocean, and you could say there is a massive pile of garbage that is just floating through the plane of water. I.e. the Pacific Ocean. Right, I said steal from the Pacific Ocean, unless you're making fun of the fact that I said specific ocean as opposed to Pacific Ocean. I'm from South I only make 70. fun of Carol, for God's sake. I appreciate that. Why am I on the show again? I make fun of my to own make fun self. Of you. <laughs> yeah. Nobody loves me, everybody hates me. I'll go back out and eat some worms. That's uh, not you know no. what? My dad always uh, said that. You'll have to tell me where that comes from because he's old uh, like you. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I'm sure it's a song. My dad said the same thing too. <laughs> um, but then one of the best parts about the plane of water, besides being the most survivable, is that it has the dark side of it. Where there are this is where aboliths come from. Uh, Things that are going to mess with your mind and really screw up how you think beings that are older than the existence of the gods and they have been sentenced to the plane of water to reside. Other than that, um, planning adventures here, make sure your PCs are at least fifth level or have a ring of water walking, although that's not going to help them much. Um, the way I imagine running a one shot in this scenario is that you have a party going off to fight a lich and they're way too low level and the lich knows it and just plane shifts them to the plane of water to let them suffocate and drown and now all of a sudden your party has to find a way to get back whether that's through um, one of the portals in the city of glass or maybe they luck out and find a decanter of endless water whirlpool and manage to get them sucked out and shot through that carol in this case the lich is a dick npc because yes. it's a monster hey hey whoa 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 not all monsters are dicks yeah matilda oh. she was a monster yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Look at that face, man. I posted Maybe some... the link. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, A, excellent job on your recap of the other three planes, uh, and excellent job to Carol and her crew for playing on the Elemental Fire. Now, the big question is, if you're going to play on one of the Elemental planes, which one do you want to do? David first. Uh, what? Which one and why? Uh actually water because <laughs> it's the most survivable that's kyle's propaganda you're listening to. <laughs> it is definitely i'm gonna make the plane uh, of water and i'm, I'm drinking the kool-aid man i i am in um no actually i mean i can think of a lot of fun things uh to do with that you know like the whole water world scenario where you you know you got a whole whole city just floating on a pile of debris you know that yeah. that would be fun 
I mean, so what I, sorry, I didn't really mention that with the 5e version of it, where there is a surface to the plane of water. Right. And I like to imagine that the plane of air is directly above that. So at this point, yes, Carol, I'm forcing gravity to work in a certain way that you will fall forever until eventually you reach the plane of water and instantly die, or you will rise or sink up to that. But I always like the idea that you have um, mythical creatures in each of those Krakens are in the plane of water, and I like to imagine that you have rocks in the plane of air, and whenever one of these rocks get hungry, it just swoops down, snatches out a kraken or an abolith from the plane of water, and flies back up to its roost. Oh my god. As a player, <laughs> imagine you're on this huge this galleon, terrifying. and all of a sudden, even bigger comes by and snatches away the kraken that was about to eat your ship. <laughs> that, that would be I'm something. excited about it, and I, I, I like I'm shaking concept. from the vision. <laughs> I like that concept. That, that's yeah. that's a good concept. That's, mm -hmm. God, that is hard to beat. I mean, geez, well, you know, uh, the elemental plane of fire when you go get a phoenix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? Makes me think maybe Heidi should do a research before facing <laughs> me. <laughs> Carol, which plane and why? I actually now that he put that out, I actually really, really like that concept of of two. Look at of, Heidi. No, stop. It's my <laughs> and she likes you, so stop it. <laughs> she likes you when you're <laughs> dead. <laughs> Don't diss her. Uh, no, I, I, I like the idea of actually having two planes, maybe planes somewhere where there are two plane, planes coming in, you know, convergence with each other. Because at the edges, there is that zone where you can get, you know, some of one plane and some of another, where there's a mix. That would be. That would be really interesting to try, and I almost don't care which one. I do still like air. Um, it would be really interesting to do water, or what, or one of the other, you know, like either uh, the uh, a lightning wouldn't be bad. That would be kind of fun, or fire, fire. I know borders it because it's the great con conflagration. I can't talk tonight, guys. I'm. Really oh, you, you got it right. <laughs> yeah, but it took me so much effort to do so. Um. So, I mean, that might be interesting to do, too. Go in and explore that area and put something there. I mean, then you could have, like, a very interesting mix of monsters. So I really like that idea. You, you, all, you know, you have until Saturday, Frank, <laughs> to change your plan. Kyle? Plane and uh, concept, and I, I, I agree. Oh, I already gave a already couple got concepts it. already. But, I mean, honestly, another thing I would... I would love to see the planes interacting with each other. And while the idea of the para elemental planes is nice, I like that idea as they are part of the original plane that they come from, as yeah, opposed to that. I like the idea of steam just shooting up randomly in the plane of air. You randomly encounter that or that you are traversing in this dark tunnel and all of a sudden you are in a pit of quicksand that is sucking you down and about to suffocate you in the plane of Earth. And what you get there is you start to blend all those things into the plane. It's a cleaner cut line. Mm -hmm. And so when you decide to say, okay, you know what? The plane of Earth and the plane of air, plane of Earth has been trying to uh, uh, take over the plane of air. Yeah. Kind of have a clean line of this is where the battle lines are. Here's the detritus and crap. <laughs> where the wind has shorn the, uh, the face of the plane of Earth, and then you get to see how uh, these two elemental planes interact with each other and how they would do war. You, I really, What's it good for? <gasps> <gasps> well, considering the elemental plane of Earth has failed so far, absolutely nothing. Nice. Uh, well, we <laughs> can look, again. we can look uh, <laughs> forward in four weeks to that. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, what is that? Your uh, water elemental adventure. 
oh shit, no, I haven't even started to write that. That was just my idea for it. Yeah, it sounds like you got the bones to it. Uh, I will agree with I'm you. I'm writing others. a heist right now. Leave me alone. <laughs> I, I, I will agree that I like that idea, uh, especially a uh, big fan of ships. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go off the beaten path, stay with the para elementals, and steal David's idea at, uh, what do you call it, the salt flats? Mm hmm. Okay, if that's so the graveyard funny. of artifacts, yeah, that, that <laughs> can turn shit. into a lot of nice things. So I am thinking, uh, and just spitballing off the top of my head, uh, you are headed to Castle Who Gives a Shit to recover a very. It important... sank into the swamp, so we built yeah. a second one. Well, it turned down, <laughs> and, and, and that is what I'm going with. I'm saying you go to Castle, who gives a shit? Because in the very basement dungeon of that place is an artifact that's very important, but some asshole NPC teleports the whole castle to the plane of ooze, and it's sinking. <laughs> Got to get it and get back up and get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. Yeah. That's nasty. Time frame, no long rests, no short rest. Screw you. It is just an ass whooping from start to finish. That that would be my idea. You know, I like the idea of traveling <laughs> yeah. to the ooze plane. I'm sorry, Carol. Last time and I'll let you talk. <laughs> You're getting rid of a cursed item, like say a baby doll, and you go, you chuck it in and you turn to walk out and you tripped on a hand of Vecna instead. <laughs> Things really turn out bad. The the leg of Vecna again. The leg of Vecna <laughs> has come from Cathaway and is now cursing you and kicking your ass all the way down the dungeon. Son <laughs> <laughs> of a bitch. Uh, Carol, hold your thought. Let's go. Final thoughts uh, started there. I'll start with Kyle. Kyle, final thoughts. Then to David. Then to Carol. You can improve it's an on interesting, what you're and you really have to think about what you're doing when you're making a plan. Because, despite the fact that all four of these planes mold together and are the creation of all life, they are so inherently different and alien that you really have to give a thought about how you're going to run something and its purpose in your adventure. And yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Scott, Scott's had a, at least four or five shots. Uh, David, final thoughts? Uh, I think the planes are a great, uh, great avenue to explore uh, as as far as Dungeons and Dragons goes. And, um, you know, just make sure you do your homework, <laughs> you know, because like like I said, either physics can work or physics don't doesn't work in it uh so does alignments and things like that too so you know uh i think it'll be a, a wonderful campaign yeah and last but not least carol carol final thoughts i don't know if i'd said a whole campaign i get you i mean you obviously could yeah. uh usually like my experience with planes in the past is we've been sent in there to retrieve something um, and I've done parts of the campaigns in them, but not often the whole campaign. Uh, I would know, love to I, see a whole campaign though. Can you imagine that? That would be, <laughs> you want at least a Ranger horizon Walker in there somewhere, or maybe the entire party is all <laughs> so intense. I mean, because of all the, like, you have definitely have to learn the rules of it. Of course, like as I said, there doesn't seem to be a lot in fifth ed right now. I guess that's part of my final thoughts is, hey, Watsy, can you please, you know, make a supplement about the planes? You know, oh, I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> Fan yeah, <laughs> because I think we're missing a lot of that for fifth ed. And I think I suspect things are going to change up um, a lot from what the manuals manual the planes. It was second ed. Jeff Grubb. Ed, masterpiece yeah that was it was i love the second ed books i loved reading through them all the supplements we had so many at least have we still have them up in our, our attic because we just don't have room to storm down here um but get rid of that 
Pathfinder crap. Put those two E's back on the shelf. No! Or, or the murder weapon <laughs> hanging over oh. uh, your left shoulder. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I Is that a pool of blood dripping from it? <laughs> Well, left, that. Carol. Your left. other left. Your military <laughs> left. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much behind me. Oh, is he on screen right now? Is the autograph on screen? I didn't even like think about it. Um, he is he on screen? No, the dead body is not on screen. You need to pan the camera down towards the floor. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that no. old thing. It's been here since we came here. Yeah. So. Well, those are basically my final thoughts anyways. Um, yeah, the, the, I'm green. Do your homework. Make sure you research it. And I guess don't be afraid to go look at those, you know, the second ed book for ideas. Older books, yeah. Yeah, look at, look at the older books for ideas. And, you know, D&D, &D, like the first rule of D&D &D is, you know, have fun with it. And even if it's not in the official, you know, rule books, you can always make up your own. You can make up your own rules as long as you keep the flavor, the correct flavor of that um, that plane. But it isn't it. They are interesting. I mean, I think yeah, we didn't we didn't do the other plane. I would have loved to have talked about limbo. In fact, maybe we could have got my. It's husband. on the list, Carol. But since it's no longer planar march, right, 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 no longer planar march, because. Themed months are shitty unless it's October, November, December. <laughs> we we'll eventually get to it, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's the most of whether or not I'll be on that week because normally I'm on the. Next, we'll do deity creation because that was something you wanted to do, and you won't be here next week. So we'll yeah. Actually, I think I can be here next week. Ah. <laughs> so, like we were saying, it's planar it's month, planar and we'll be, month. Doing <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing the transitive planes next time. Ethereal It'll be a Bay. little bit longer show because we're going to cover all 666. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go, folks. Uh, I'll say it expert opinions uh because they did their homework and you didn't so uh agree with all three of them uh especially carol's last thought is there's not a lot of crap out there for 5e so you have to go to other uh alternatives there's a lot of good online resources as well as manual of the plains jeff grubb uh classic i mean uh, uh i have almost every single one of those two ebooks and those guys were masters at it so just make sure that you and your players are on the same page unless it's a major surprise don't forget to make your npcs dicks that somehow cooperate like <laughs> pasha and matilda but oh frank's npcs are dicks <laughs> uh but he yeah was stuck up on himself and matilda was clingy so <laughs> So Remember, NPC stands for normally prickish characters. <laughs> uh, but watch, uh, watch last Saturday's show. It was it was pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to pat myself on the back. We leave that job to Carol because uh, she knows on the back because Frank, it was you. You did an awesome job, and that was a, it was a lot of fun to play. I'm almost interested as the the parts we did not see because as you said it's only two hours. So you have to pare it down. Mm -hmm. And I almost, yeah, I almost a lot of dick NPCs. I think a lot of dicks. <laughs> now, if you guys are watching that episode and you too fall in love with Carol's husband, remember he's from New England and he likes the Patriots. Maybe that'll help you. Hey, hey Tom Brady has an amazing Scottish accent. So, you Tom know. oh my Go god. On, okay? Goat <laughs> ass. Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, Carol, we're from the rest of the world. No. <laughs> you know what? Haters going to hate. That's all I'm going to say. But you know what? I do love Tom Silva, and that's why there's a restraining order. So <laughs> if you want to remove that restraining order, I'll come work. <laughs> uh, folks, use your skills of seduction. Hi, Tom. I do like things that are level. 
Wow. Uh, folks, this has been a wow. It went there. <laughs> another in the rolls uh, for the ages. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to buy cool stuff like a duvet or a bath mat, which I own, uh, tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. If you got a question for any of these guys about their planes, Hit them up. You see their uh, Twitter handles there. Kyle won't answer. He doesn't check that shit. He just now followed Phil Bar. RP. Oh, yeah. He finally, I'm like a godfather, for God's sake. You just now followed me. Jesus. I thought um, I had been following you at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I followed you. You sucked. I got rid of it. <laughs> you just Whoops. followed me, too. You know what the kicker is? He was my 500th follower. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. I unfollowed your you're down to 499 again. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten a few more since then, so it's it's not falling under. Uh, so, uh, folks, if you have a question for these guys, uh, seriously, these get these guys will be happy to help you. Uh, I'll be happy to help you if you want to steal their chair from them. They won't really care that much I will kill uh, you. because we do like different opinions. Uh, no Let us know. Yeah. This, this Saturday opinion. is the campaign, so yeah, you got to put up with Carol and Kyle again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, the following Saturday is a one shot, and we are still looking for one, possibly two players at this point in time. It is going to be a planar adventure. I'm not telling you which plane. Uh, you can. It's go to the hell. plane of water, David. Take a watch <laughs> on this. <laughs> You can go to hell, but there's nine of them to choose. <laughs> Follow us. Uh, if you want a bingo card to win like David did, uh, hit us up. We'll send you a bingo card. Uh, you got to watch the show either live or the next day because on Monday, if I haven't heard from you, tough shit, doesn't matter. Da 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 da. Uh, David actually had two lines uh, because the show was so weird. Uh, for all of us here, we ran a little long. For all of us here at Between the Rolls, Thank you very much. Uh, tune in Saturday. Uh, everybody give a wave and let's get the hell out of Dodge. What do you call a prostitute with a runny nose? Uh, full. <laughs> <laughs>